force and motion problem on an incline. So imagine that you have a 22, I thought it was two, a 20 kilogram block resting on or on an incline. And that incline is angled at 15 degrees. And a rope is attached to the block at 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So you can see that's with respect to the horizontal, not with respect to the ramp. And that force is pulling the block up the ramp. What force is necessary to accelerate the block up the ramp at 0 0.5 kilograms, good lord, 0 0.5 meters per second squared? All right, so we're going to do that whole force and motion analysis um, to examine this problem. First thing we have to do, of course, is identify the object of interest. Pretty straightforward. It is going to be our block. All right. And then we need to really kind of decide what we, what we want to answer. And then that will guide us which analysis we start with, whether it's forces or kinematics. And so we want to answer the question, what force is necessary? So let's start with a force analysis. And a force analysis involves a couple of things. It involves force interactions and that free body diagram. So developing, understanding those interactions to develop that free body diagram. So what is interacting with our object, the block? Well, we know that there's the force of gravity. That's going to be between the block and the earth. And if I draw the free body diagram in parallel, we know that the force of gravity always points down. Don't forget it's equal to that mg. We often make that mistake of not including that m in there. So we know the force of gravity is pointing down. We know the block is interacting with the ramp. And so we call that the normal force. Just because the block is resting on the ramp, there is that interaction. And that's always perpendicular to the point of contact. So there's our block. The ramp is angled at 15 degrees. So we know that the normal force is going to go up and to the left. So perpendicular to that contact. We are told that the ramp is frictionless in the problem. I, I think I neglected to mention that. So in, in the, um, the notes for the problem, it does indicate that it is frictionless, so we don't have friction. Of course, we do have that rope. So we have the force of the rope. Typically call that a tension. That's the one we're interested in, of course. And that's between the block and the rope. And we know that is at 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. All right. Now, we, are, we have to assess the idea of, does it help us to rotate the axes? Is the motion of the object along one dimension that's going to align with a rotated axis? And in this case, yeah, the acceleration is along the ramp. And so we're going to want to identify that acceleration, remember, away from the free body diagram. We don't want to um, think of it as a force. It's not a force. But sometimes it helps us to identify that acceleration. And then, um, well, that's probably not the best. Let's make sure it's more like 15 degrees. And then we're going to have our axis rotated. Wow, that's a terrible free body diagram. We are going to redraw that because our normal force is off that 15 degrees. We did not draw that well. So no sense in starting with a bad free body diagram. So we have the force of gravity. We know that our tension is off. Well, that's not really 40 degrees either. There's our, oops, that's orange. There's our tension. And our normal force is a little steeper than I gave it. It's probably closer to this. And then if we draw our coordinate system along, why do those two keep looking so parallel? There we go. <laughs> There's our two, our perpendicular. There's our coordinate system. So we know that the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp, so it's perpendicular to that coordinate system. Oof. All right, so let's then number our three forces and separate them relative to this rotated coordinate system so that we can analyze the vectors. Okay, so we have the horizontal and vertical, and these are our prime, our rotated coordinate system. Force one, two, 
and 3. Force 1 is the force of gravity. So, we, the force of gravity is normally this way. Our ramp rotates 15 degrees. So we know that this is 15 degrees, that angle between straight down and our uh, vertical prime. So that's 15 degrees. So horizontally, we have minus mg sine of 15 degrees. So the opposite is our horizontal component. That's our sine. And vertically, we have, and it's pointing to the left, or down the ramp in my case, mg cosine of 15 degrees is our vertical component. All right? Force number two, that's our tension. So again, we have a horizontal and vertical component of the tension. Now, the problem tells us that the tension is 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal, and we've now shifted our coordinate system by 15 degrees. And so we're looking at 25 degrees with respect to the new coordinate system. So this angle should be 25 degrees. So we have positive to the right, T times the cosine of 25. And we also know it's pointing up, T sine of 25. And the cosine of 25 and the sine of 25 are good, indeed going to give us positive values. All right, then we have force number three, our normal force. Well, it doesn't have any horizontal component in our rotated coordinate system. It's only upwards in our vertical rotated system. Okay, good. Now we want to say, all right, what is the direction of the acceleration, if any? Is it horizontal or vertical? So do the sum of the forces horizontally equal a non-zero acceleration? Yeah, they do. That's what we're interested in. The sum of the vertical forces do, in fact, equal zero. Okay, so let's then sum these up. Now that I've broken them into their components, I can add them and apply Newton's second law. So we have minus mg sine of 15 plus t cosine of 25 equals 20 times 0 0.5, our acceleration. Since we're interested, we're interested in the tension, remember, we can solve this for the tension. So I'm going to bring mg sine of 15 over. We have t times the cosine of 25 is equal to 20 times 0 0.5 plus, oops, plus mg times the sine of 15. All right, well now, and we still want to solve for t, let's put everything into numerical values. I, would, I can divide by the cosine of 25 everything. Let's just get that into sort of those numerical values. So the cosine of 25, I have 0 0.91 t is equal to 10 plus 20 times 9.8 times the sine of 15 plus 50.73. So I have 0 0.91 t equals 60.73. This tells me that t is equal to 0.91. 66.7 newtons. And that's all that I was interested in. I didn't have to worry about the vertical direction. I didn't need that vertical information, but it's always good, of course, to do the analysis, get to sort of that idea, and then go after what you want, right? That, that tension T in our case. Okay, so identifying the object, looking at those interactions, separating them, identifying which direction the acceleration is in, course, paying attention to that rotated axis situation and then solving for what you need. All right, good job.